Rub up your engines! Okay, today we're talking about a 2005 Toyota Matrix guy bought it used for like 1300 bucks. And probably the main reason they got it so cheap was the transmission was broken. They thought it was a clutch, but it wasn't. So they put a used transmission in it, and that cost them like 1300 bucks, 1400 bucks. So he's got about three grand in the car now, which is, of course, nothing for a vehicle these days. So we're going to see. It's got check engine lights and all that stuff on it. As you can see, it's got Tennessee tags. It is the XRS version of the Matrix. It was made in Cambridge, Ontario. He's got a little bitty oil leak. So the first thing, we're gonna take the oil cap off and pour some UV dye in it. We just pour it in, put the oil cap back on. Now we road tested the dial go through the system and the little dial come out. We able to use my yellow sunglasses and a UV light to see exactly where it's leaking from. But it's got a check engine light and stuff, so we're gonna scan it. As per usual, it just plugs in the data port there. We're gonna try out this new X tool. It's got 170,169 miles on it. Automatic detection, detecting. Hey, the interior's still in good shape. These cloth seats can last forever. That's why I like them. Just like my wife's Matrix, there's a lot of room in these things. There's something I don't like, a sunroof, and it leaked on me. Had to clean out the drains because it was leaking so close it and leave it closed is my advice automatic scan here we go scan it pretty quickly and it's got calls for the stupid airbag system you never really expect them to work all that well in a car that's this old the trouble codes and it says indicator of auto pattern seat airbag active mode ah! That's a weird one. Realize this does have those defective Takata airbags. I personally wouldn't trust them. Put the old seatbelt on when you're driving. We'll clear it just to see if it comes back later. And now we'll go to the other trouble codes. The only other trouble codes were here for the main system. Engine and electronically controlled transmission. You gotta turn it off, turn it on again because it's an old car and that's hard work. So here we go. Read the codes and it's got secondary air injection pump is stuck and off. Secondary air injection pump is stuck off. Secondary air injection pump is stuck. We'll clear that for one main reason. This is Tennessee. They don't do any kinds of emissions testing. The car will run perfectly fine as it does. So we don't care. It would be a relatively expensive repair if you live in an emissions area. Because normally with that, you got to replace the stinking pump. And they're extremely expensive. If you don't live in one of those areas, here's a picture of one of the pump. In this case, it's a used one for sale because they're so expensive. No, a lot of guys will try a used one. If they really go bad, they'll often idle bad. Let's see what this thing does. We'll start her up. It's idling perfectly fine. Hear that rattling noise? The catalytic converter's rattling. Now it runs okay, and it's not tripping any cat coats. You can drive it with a rattling catalytic converter all you want, but if it finally breaks off, the pieces will jam in the back, and it'll clog it up. And then, when you go to the back, hardly any air will come out, but it's coming out fine. And it runs good enough, so you don't have to worry about it. And this being Tennessee, a lot of guys will just throw them away rather than buy one. If it finally does break and clog everything up. Now the average price to replace a cat on this is between $1,900 and $2,000. It's part of the exhaust manifold assembly. So it's very expensive. So if it runs okay and nobody cares, there's no check engine light for that, just leave the thing Alone. So now we're going to look at live data to see what kind of shape this thing is in. Now I gotta say this machine, it kind of updates rather slowly. This airflow sensor is good and stable. Now we can see long term fuel trim here. It's 2.31%. That means it's adding 2.31%. Kind of typical. A lot of times these things will run a little bit lean as they age. You're going to get better gas mileage. You might put some of Bernie's cleaner in if you want it to run less lean. But you'll probably get worse gas mileage if it's not running as lean. So that I would just leave alone. My Matrix, hey, it runs somewhat lean. But it gets 37 miles a gallon on the highway. doesn't burn oil, so I don't care. You can see the engine's working perfectly fine. Zero misfires for all four cylinders. They're all zero. Now we're going to take it for a road test, but see on this 2005, look, this is all metal. We go two years later to this 07, which is my Matrix. It's all plastic. Cheaper made. They just go to it because it's cheaper, that's all. This is a much better design metal. Let's close the hood, take it for a spin. The only light is the tire pressure monitoring system. And, hey, 
it's an old car you know it's almost 20 years old so tire pressure monitoring batteries are worn out it, who cares get a pressure gauge to measure it rather than replace four of those for a bunch of money camera okay, because it's old but it's got a cd player and aside from the rattling catalytic converter it rides quite well and being a manual transmission it's a lot zippier than mine no corners quite well these things were made for cornering now they're rather rough riding on a bumpy road but they really do corner quite well even my wife says it hers it wants to go fast strangely enough she drives it a lot faster than her lexus because the lexus just cruises along but she says the matrix just wants to get out and go and they really do if you drive them right the brakes work perfectly fine when you hit the brakes look no problems at all but why do people go by so we'll have some space for a little drag strip here. Now it's not a race car by any of the stretch of the imagination, but it's fast enough. Nobody's behind us. So, here we go. Hey, it burns rubber. Whee! <laughs> hey, this thing is still zippy. It's a lot zippier than ours because it's a manual transmission. You get a lot more speed out of it. Just keeping it lower gear and it'll accelerate better. So if you want to pass someone, all you got to do is, we're in third gear now. We're just going on to second gear. Zippy. Fun to drive. And of course, when you're really pushing it, all that exhaust gas is going out. The catalytic converter stops rattling then. <laughs> but, hey, it's got plenty of acceleration. If it had a clogged cat, it wouldn't be driving this fast. It's zooming up. So, it's not clogged yet. Sometimes you can drive them years that way. It's really stable going down the road. And really, aside from the rattling catalytic converter, it's pretty quiet it's quieter than my wife hers had been in a couple of wrecks before we bought it so sometimes you get some wind noise this one doesn't really have the wind noise i'm just kind of surprised that the transmission had to be replaced because hey, this used one worked perfectly fine before this i've never seen a standard transmission break in the matrix so i don't know i might question did it really need replacing or not i don't know this one works fine it's a used one supposedly i don't know i didn't see the job done either but it's rare that these standard transmissions going out and as for my wife's it's got the four speed automatic i've never seen one of those break but who knows the owner before him might have just beaten the heck out of it jammed it into reverse when they were going forward and that of course will break anything i've seen that happen just a shame that that cat is rattling because as you can hear it's kind of annoying it's not affecting the running yet eventually it'll probably break into pieces and it will but it isn't yet now other than the rattling it runs perfectly fine so let's check about that oil leak now that we've taken a spin for the leak dye to go through the system okay so i got my yellow sunglasses over my regular ones and this cool uv light will crawl under there and look for where the leak's coming from. And just as I suspect, it's the front main seal of the engine where the crankcase pulley goes over the crankcase. There's a seal inside there. Now you can take the engine apart, replace the seal, reasonable job. But I'm gonna try this AT205 reseal. I've had very good luck with it. You pour it in, it rejuvenates the seal, and then the leak stops. I'll give this a try. I know it looks like water, but it isn't. We'll just pour the whole bottle in. It's a liquid polymer, and it rejuvenates the rubber on the oil seal. Kind of amazing stuff. Now, if you have an oil gasket leak, it won't fix it. It only works on the seal, because the seals have a spring inside that holds them in place. And since that's holding it tight, if the rubber's kind of worn, this can rejuvenate the rubber and it can stop leaking if it doesn't work you can always take the engine apart and replace the seal it won't hurt anything and i've seen it fix quite a few of these you give them two 250 miles of driving and then see if the drip stops great now i mean if you don't want to take everything apart and it's only dripping a little you can just add oil as it leaks out it's not that big of a deal you know you can either try this if it doesn't work take the engine apart and put a new seal on it or just live with the leak i've seen them drip for years before they really go when it's really bad they'll leave gigantic puddles make some mess then you know it's time to change the seal but this stuff works pretty good. We're going to see if it works. God tell me in a few weeks if it stopped or not. So there you have it. An 05 Matrix, 170,000 miles. Still runs like a clock. Yeah, the catalytic converter's rattling, but it still runs okay. You can replace it if you want to spend a whole bunch of money. You can take it off if you want to break the law. But the car itself, hey, made in Cambridge, Ontario. Still runs like a top. Breaks like a top. Doesn't burn oil. Well, mind you, it leaks a little. You place a seal but for the money he's got invested in this thing less than three thousand bucks hey 
you got a good deal. And well, it still looks good too. I gotta say, I'd rather have these factory wheels than the ones mine came with. What can you do? I bought it as a used car and it came with these. And it still rolls down the road perfectly fine. They don't leak any air, so I'm not gonna be changing them anytime soon. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.